So I've been using the Moto E budget Android phone for a year now. So how has it actually held up over that time? So let's go ahead and look at the pros and cons of using this budget Moto E phone for over a year. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. Okay, so whenever I bought this Moto E phone from Walmart, it is about $150 at the time. And whenever I did purchase this phone, it was also known as the Moto E7. So this was actually the specifications when I was at Walmart and also from older websites before this phone was released. But ever since it was released, it's been rebranded the Moto E. And I also did previous reviews on this phone as well with the initial review and unboxing and also a one month review. So if you wanted to see my reviews on that, I will leave it in the description area below. You can check that out after watching this video. So now let's get into the pros and cons of using the Moto E phone on a daily basis. And so the first pro with this phone is overall, I think this is a good general use phone. Like for example, for me, I use this for content consumption. So YouTube, Netflix, any other streaming services. I use this for emails, messaging, chat, some light gaming, and the occasional video and photo every now and then. And so if you're that type of user, which is the majority of people, then this is gonna pretty much offer you everything that you need for overall general daily use. And then the second biggest pro is the big screen. So this has a really large screen. And if you wanted to see the full specifications on this phone, I will leave that description area below. But needless to say, whenever it comes to content consumption, at least for me, this screen doesn't disappoint. And even though it's not going to be the highest resolution, it is a big enough screen where, you know, you're not really going to be lacking when it comes to watching content on this phone. And then another pro that I absolutely love about this phone is the battery life. So some of the testing I've done, I've been able to keep this phone on for about three days, I think with very light use. And if I really didn't use it much at all, it would probably last four to five days, maybe even a week if I really uh, didn't use this phone much or use the low power setting. And so this has a really large battery and this helps a lot, especially for power users. And then another pro is that this has some additional features that even the high-end Android phones and iPhones do not have, and that's namely things like micro SD card, so you could expand the storage, and a headphone jack. So it's really odd that these are now considered additional features, whereas before it was pretty much in every Android phone. And even now if you're buying these flagship $1,000 plus phones, they're not gonna have a headphone jack or expandable storage. So that's kind of where we're at right now with both Android phones and also the iPhone really never had that uh, expandable storage to begin with and their headphone jack, they're gone pretty much as well. And so those are like some of the biggest pros that I've found with this phone. And then one additional pro that I would say on here that I did not expect is the durability of this phone. And so I have dropped this on some concrete and it just left like a little small scuff at the bottom. But I kind of thought this whole thing would shatter with this whole, it looks like a glass backing, but it's probably not. And so this is a pretty durable phone and I was really surprised and glad that it had this additional durability. If you love reading books, then check out Audible which has the largest selection of audiobooks anywhere on the internet. Sign up today and get a 30-day free trial. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. All right, so now that we're seeing the pros of using the Moto E phone, let's go ahead and take a look at the cons because at least for me, from a general user, there really aren't that many cons except for one really big con and that's the performance. Now, even though this is something that I expected because this is a budget Android phone, the problem with Android phones overall is that the performance gets worse over time with continual updates. And even though there are a number of things that you could potentially do with your phone, like reset it, you know, limiting some of the app usage in the background, all those things are just additional work and they only serve a short term uh, use whenever you're trying to improve performance. And eventually, you're going to have to get updates on this phone, especially when it comes to security updates. And with Android overall, even in flagship phones, the performance just keeps getting worse and worse. And when you have that with really budget phones, then it gets even more significant. 
And even though all of the apps that I'm currently using work really well at the beginning, with each Android update, it just makes the performance just a lot, lot worse, even though the hardware is definitely capable of running all these applications. And so that's one thing that I would say, if you are gonna be buying this phone, just be aware that the performance will get worse over time. And then a second con, and I would say this really isn't a huge con because of the fact that this is a budget Android phone. If you're looking to get great video and photography quality out of this, well, this isn't it. Even with this dual camera setup, this isn't the phone for you if you're looking for that. But other than that, those are my pros and cons of using the Moto E phone for more than a year now. And I would say for the majority of people, you know, spending like, you know, $150 and I've seen a lot of people get it for less than that. I think this is still a good option for a budget phone, but just go in there knowing that you're not going to get the best performance in the world and it is going to get worse over time and you're not going to get the highest quality camera out of it. But if you can live with that, this is still, I think, overall a really solid budget phone for the majority of general users out there. And so if you actually had any thoughts on this, whether it's a pro or a con or a little bit of both, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my geek gear reviews or any of my previous Moto E videos, I'll leave all of that in the description area as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Go Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group.